Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 170 of the Speared Sunnies podcast. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I can't stop doing that shit. I'm still doing it. It's been a whole fucking week. I'm still thinking about that dude in, in his fucking car blowing me kisses. <laughs> Wonderful. Hope you guys uh, had a good week, had a good weekend. Uh, if you, I'm recording this one on fucking... Uh, Wednesday the 12th, so if you're a Patreon supporter, you're getting it on Thursday, everyone else gets it on Sunday, as we know, um, and dude, I'm right off the back of the, uh, the video that I put up yesterday, the fucking, um, the sketch, the, what was it called? Fired, I don't even remember what I fucking called my own videos, guys, welcome to, welcome to the podcast, fucking idiot, uh, and, uh, it's, it's currently going kind of viral, which is cool, I uh, put up a sketch about the whole um, phenomenon about comedians getting fired for doing comedy that wasn't funny when they were new, you know, or shit that shit that may have been funny 10 years ago, but now it's not, or, or shit that wasn't funny 10 years ago uh, still is not, but people are getting in trouble for it even though they don't do it anymore. It's really cool, man. Though I'm really proud of the sketch. Uh, it went, it's uh, something new for me. Uh, but it, yeah, it went, went pretty well. Uh, it's got like front page of Reddit, which is cool. Thank you very much to all of the people who post uh, my shit on Reddit. I don't understand Reddit or how it works. I don't even... Uh, one time I tried to understand it to work out a, a, a getting an account, but I don't get it. I mean, I, I look at it every now and then, but I, I don't fucking understand how it works. I think one time I tried to post a video in the videos thing. And it was like, oh, you need more karma. And I was like, oh, you need to fuck off. I don't care. And uh, then I uninstalled the app. So... <laughs> I don't understand how that shit works, so I really do appreciate people who post my shit in there. Uh, you guys are the fucking true kings, because otherwise this shit wouldn't get uh, seen by other people. So, it means a lot. Um, it's interesting though, man. Like, I, uh, I, a lot of people, it's funny, man. Like, a lot of people, like I wrote in the video, are offended and are saying that the analogy is a bit of a stretch. Or they're fucking angry about... Because I think, I think the thing is... Whoever posted it in uh, in Reddit said that uh, they they wrote so my video is called "What Firing a Comedian for Old Jokes Is Like," right? Uh, but the person who put it in Reddit, God bless them, they wrote uh, the Oscars controversy with Kevin Hart summed up perfectly by Australian comedian Lewis Spears. Something about Oscars and Kevin Hart. Uh, so all these people are coming to the video, going, "Oh, this is this is only about Kevin Hart." This is only about Kevin Hart, and some of the fucking references that Lewis has made don't line up 100% correctly with the Kevin Hart situation, so I'm offended by the video, and I don't think it's very good. Which always happens when new people see your shit, because it's like, I talk about it all the time, it's like, you have your bubble, and then there's, and then outside that is people like those people that haven't found you yet, and then outside of that is people who haven't found you yet that would never like you no matter how good you are at what you do. And whenever my shit gets on Reddit, it's like a nice little collection of people who, who do like me but have never heard of me before. Well, would, would like me, but they haven't had the opportunity to see it, so that's great, get those people. But then, when it's on Reddit, it also get seen by people who would never like me. And those people are always like, oh, I don't like it. It's not, for, it's not specifically for me. I hate this fucking thing that I didn't pay for. Fuck you. You've ruined my day. Even though I watched something that I knew I wouldn't like because I read the title. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what the sketch is, is actually about. It's, there's a little bit of the Kevin Hart thing. It's it's less about Kevin Hart's specific scenario, and it's more about the entire fucking culture, cancel culture, of just looking at what someone did 10 years ago uh, and then getting them in trouble for it. Like James Gunn, the director of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, he got fired for what were definitely jokes. I mean, they weren't good jokes. I, I, I'll, I'll say that. They weren't funny. But I also will say that they were fucking like a decade ago, he had already apologized for them. And they were definitely jokes, not something to be taken seriously. Uh, and I think that whole, I think it's, it's less about any specific scenario and more about the entire cancel culture in general, which I think is bullshit. So I wrote the thing, I put Kevin's name in it as just a bit of a, a small reference. And also mainly because I think saying Kevin is such a funny, like it's such a funny name, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, it's a funny name, um, but yeah, I'd say uh, really there's more references to the James Gunn situation in there, 
Um, I did do a small thing because people are saying, oh, well, what Kevin Hart did is he actually didn't tell jokes. They were just homophobic statements. And it's like, yeah, okay, dude, sure, whatever. Um, but even if, even if that's true, which I've seen some of the stuff he said, I didn't think it was funny, but they definitely fucking look like jokes to me. Even if it's true that they're not jokes, he also clearly hasn't acted like that in 10 years, which is something that I referenced in the video. I said, there's a line, something like, oh, that was 10 years ago. I'm a better person. I'm a better graphic designer and I'm a better person. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know, I just think the whole fucking punishing people for shit they've done a decade ago, when they have clearly, by their actions, you see a visible difference. You can see, oh, they're not like that anymore, but let's fucking punish them anyway. It's just so short-sighted and stupid. It's like, do you actually want people to change? Or do you want revenge? Because that's what it fucking is. It's not change, it's revenge. It's not promoting change, it's getting revenge for something they did ages ago and then the scenario doesn't get improved. So, yeah, so the sketch was kind of written about the culture in, of cancelling people in general rather than any one specific scenario. Obviously, there's references to a few different things in there, but it's not about one specific thing like the people who are angry. <laughs> like, it's funny, it's so funny. It's so obvious who watched it all the way through, like the video and who didn't. Because towards the end of the video, there's a line in there that literally says, some people are getting offended by this sketch in general. And I break the third wall. And then one of the characters goes, oh yeah, they're saying the analogy is a little bit of a stretch. And then the only negative comments are people going, oh, this, is, this analogy is a bit of a stretch. And you know, if they're saying that, they haven't watched the whole video all the way through because I literally say that in the fucking video. I say the analogy is a bit of a stretch and then the biggest, most common criticism that I get is the analogy is a bit of a stretch, meaning these fucking idiots haven't watched the video all the way through. They got 70% of the way through the fucking sketch and they're like, oh yeah, I know what this is about. This is analogy is a bit of a fucking stretch. But I've already fucking said it. I don't know, people are so stupid. It's like, oh, I'm going to comment on something before I, uh, I watch the whole thing. But look at me, guys. Look at me getting fucking angry about a extreme minority. It has 15,000 upvotes and only 900 downvotes. And on, on Reddit, it has 45,000 upvotes. And look at me getting angry at what is literally maybe 100 comments. Out of thousands. So, hey, man, that's me. Something something happens, something goes viral, really good for my career, and I'm like, yeah, but one person didn't like it, so... <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I'm really happy with the reaction. It's, it's fucking cool to see, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm, it's good, man. Like, I wasn't planning on doing that. We didn't plan to do that sketch. I mean, I'd kind of been thinking about the idea for a while, and I'd, I had been writing down things for jokes for it but I hadn't written I ha I've, I wasn't planning on like next week I'm doing this sketch uh, I was actually supposed to put out a Lou review which you will have already seen because that came out on Thursday um, but you know I was just like oh well this thing has happened it's kind of, the, the culture is in the news at the moment I'll just fucking write it and then we filmed it in the radio station before we were live like an hour before we were live Keelan and I just smashed it out uh, and then fucking put it up the next day. And it's like, dude, so good. I haven't, I haven't done that for ages. So I think, uh, you know, 2019, not only is it, is it genius of 2019, but I think it's consistent culture, consistent content all 2019. Um, and actually being on time to shit for once. So I'm really happy with, uh, with how it's all going. And, uh, that's fucking, that's fucking sick that a whole bunch of new people, uh, are seeing it. You know who I think would like the video? Philip DeFranco. Send it to him. He's shared one of my videos before. I reckon he'd get around this one too. 
Um, what else has been happening this week? Oh, also the um, the Luke and Lewis radio show. If you're listening to this podcast on a Sunday, we've started filming all of the episodes again, and the video podcast is back. So we're filming the entire show and putting it up on YouTube uh, for free. If you want to watch that, and there's also the obviously the audio version as well, because we're on every day this week uh, for the next two weeks. Um, so by the time you listen to this, we'll have four shows left, and then we're done for the year, and then we're back. Uh, doing something we don't really know yet but we are coming back we don't know in what form yet um, so yeah that's that's really cool we're getting those filmed and those are coming out um, I'm so I'm so fucking hot I think I'm gonna die man it is like I reckon it's maybe 35 degrees in this warehouse I don't know if you can hear but I've just installed fans in the warehouse and uh, they don't help <laughs> It's just blowing hot air on me. I've got one point above me on the wall, just fucking blasting me, and uh, I just—it's—I don't think it's helping at all because of these fucking jeans. What I have to do later today for the show, we don't get paid anywhere near enough to do this fucking radio show because I'm going in at six p.m. We don't—we don't start till ten p.m. But I'm going in at six p.m. to do a fucking workout gym class in my jeans because we thought that would be a funny idea to do and you know what it will be funny and the video might even be up by the time you listen to this it will be funny but holy shit it's gonna suck it's gonna suck so much i walk down the street in my jeans seven minute walk and i i think i've got sunburn i was sweating and uh i needed to sit down for a minute all i wanted to do was go to the post office send off some merch and then uh I went to the cafe to to get a to get a coffee and I just I wasn't planning on it but I was like I think I need to sit down in this cafe because it has aircon for 20 minutes. <laughs> because if I go back out there I'm going to fucking die. Australian summers, man. I I don't actually you know what? I do recommend that you all do it in jeans. I thoroughly recommend it because you look so much better than you would look in shorts, all right? All of my lanky brothers, my chunky sisters, we all look stupid in shorts, all right? Hey, ladies out there, don't who needs your short shorts? If you're a little bit on the if you're a little bit on the if you're a bit of an obesity, <laughs> fuck shorts. If you're a bit of an obesity, fuck shorts, all right? Wear jeans. You don't need that weird red discoloration in between your thighs what are you doing why are you doing that to yourself right rubbing your thighs together in your short shorts you don't need that respect yourself chuck on some jeans i mean sure you know there is a trade-off if you do wear jeans and you're a bit of a fat chick in the summer you are gonna have by the end of the day a world championship with like a prize winning smelly pussy by the end of the day but that's okay because no one's going to be able to get you out of those jeans by the end of the day. They'll be molded to you. So no one's even going to know that you've got a prize-winning first-class stinky puss by the end of the day. That's a weird competition to win. Do you really... Do You th- You know what? I bet that competition exists. Like, like smelly pussy prize shows. Like, you know how they have dog shows? I bet they've got the smelly pussy parade. <laughs> No, the pungent pussy parade. That's what they call it. The triple P. Hey, fuck the KKK. I'm in the triple P. Pungent pussy parade. No, that's not a gang. You, you'd you be in the pungent pussy posse. The pungent pussy posse, and then they would have a parade. So it's actually the quadruple P. Once a year, the pungent pussy posse has the pungent pussy posse parade. And, it, and all the girls, all the fat chicks go out and they put on jeans for the day and they jog, they go to gym, they have a run, right? They sit in the sauna and then they all, they all go on a parade. And how the parade works is it's like a raised platform. So they set up this raised platform on the street, right? On the road. So they block off a big road and they set up this big raised platform. And what... You ha- how the platform works is obviously it's like a bit of a runway show. So there is an element of fashion to the pungent pussy parade. There's an element of fashion to it. But how it works is is what they do is the, the, the fat chicks with the stinky pussies or the skinny chicks with bad diets or the medium weight girls with fungal infections. What they do is they walk down the runway, okay? And it's a raised platform. And what they have is... it's 
down the bottom for the spectators because obviously smell, it's not a visual thing. It's mostly about the smell. Stinkiest pussy wins the prize. So what they do is for the spectators or the sniff-taters, <laughs> what they do is they have a, like a, a periscope. It's like a periscope apparatus, but instead of having eyes, they've got two little, uh, two little um, funnel things that point upwards that you hook your nose into. So you put your nose on the thing, you close your eyes, and then the tube goes all the way up, and, and, it, ju- and it sits perfectly in the middle of the runway so that when these fat chicks with smelly pussies are walking down, what you can do is the tube is just placed perfectly in between each fat chick's legs and as they walk past it's kind of like to the beat of the music so every girl will come with every beat of the music so it'll be like dun 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 and it's like every girl dun pussy 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 and with every beat you just give you just go and and that <laughs> and that's how you judge who wins the pungent, pu- the pungent pussy posse parade, and that's how you judge who gets smelliest pussy of the year. Okay, and you know what? Now I bet, I bet that that's a thing. I'm gonna look it up. Smelly, smelly pussy competition. I bet that's a thing. Uh, smelly pussy competition. Uh. Huh. Ever I've got a forum post. Oh, what the fuck? Chloe Kardashian sniffs Kim and Courtney's pussy in bizarre competition about smelly vaginas. Well, I gotta read this. All right, this is the fucking just three cunts smelling each other's cunts. <laughs> uh, where are we? In what is a new low, sisters Kim and Courtney decided to hold a very vulgar competition on Sunday night's reality show to see whose private parts smell the sweetest. Well, I mean, that's kind of the opposite, really. The trio used their spare time in luxury confines to test sister Chloe's theory that drinking lots of pineapple juice makes everything sweeter. Hey, Chloe Kardashian, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter how many gallons of pineapple juice you drink. No one wants to go anywhere near that gargantuan puss. <laughs> because it, no one's interested, okay? You could drink you could drink you could you could back up a fucking like an oil tanker, not a truck, like the boat, like before it gets distributed onto multiple trucks that then fill up petrol stations. I'm talking an oil tanker of the sea worth of pineapple juice just pumped directly into Chloe Kardashian and she could drink it cuz you know she's fucking gigantic, right? She could drink the, she could she could smash two tankers. That bitch is so fucking big, she could probably pick up two tankers, crush them like she's at a frat party, and then just tip it, all this pineapple, like, like a gigaliter, which is like a thousand million liters or whatever the fuck, a gigaliter of pineapple juice directly down her gullet, like the fucking giant, like, like the BFG, instead of, but instead of the big friendly giant, it's the, it's the BFK, the big fat Kardashian, and, <laughs> and she just fucking... She just guzzles down this pineapple juice and there'd be one brave soul, right? One brave regular sized human. She's like, what is she? If you look at photos, she's what, like 18 feet tall? So, you know, there's, she's like as big as a, as, no, she's big as a building, right? And then there's this one regular sized, you know, 5 foot 10, 70, 70 kilo. kilo dude with enough balls to go in. And what he does is he goes in to sniff like Khloe Kardashian's gargantuan pussy, even after she's had two two fucking oil tankers worth of pineapple juice. He walks up and he goes, "I'm the man to give it a sniff." And as he walks up her leg uh, to give her pussy a sniff, halfway up her calf, he just dies because it gets to be a toxic environment that's not livable uh, for humans. So I will never know. But uh, I, I, <laughs> I could imagine that it would be uh, the world's stinkiest giant pussy. Um, well, I want to know who had this, who, which one of these fucking Kardashian whores had this, the smelliest pussy. Where are we? A vid- um, 
in an episode that was filled with wall-to-wall vulgarity. Oh, really? Was Kim Kardashian going around saying, Oh, g'day, cunts. Welcome to a Kim Kardashian review. Today, we're going to be looking at my fucking porno. It's not very good. Um, so, Kim Kardashian reckons she would have the sweetest smelling pussy. So, what do they do? Oh. So, they all drank pineapple juice. And, oh, yuck! That's fucking gross! They didn't... Oh, I thought it would be gross enough to see the sisters, like, like putting their noses up to their pussies, smelling it. What they did was they got a fucking towel, and then they, they, they patted it on their puss, and then they got the towel, and they got their sister to smell the towel. What the fuck? How are these chicks, like, the face of... of of every cosmetic company ever, and they're just on their reality TV show, dabbing their pussy with paper towels and sniffing it. Really? Is that is that what that is that what their fucking show is? It's just the 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 I mean the the pungent pussy parade. That's what it fucking is, isn't it? Well, if Kim Kardashian used a paper towel, Khloe Kardashian would have to use like I don't know a fucking tapestry. <laughs> the curtains. All right. So. They all gave Kim a fucking sniff. One of them said it smelled like a tropical island. Is that one of those tropical islands where they've like... (laughs) That the USA dropped napalm onto? And it just never recovered? Um, So Kim smells like a flower. Um, So Kim, Kim won the pussy comp. Who lost the pussy comp? Oh, hilarious. Courtney lost. (laughs) Yeah, because they wouldn't even want to fucking give it a sniff. Because they would die. This is fucking horrendous. As if that's on TV. Um, Oh, ever encountered a stinky pussy? Tell your stories. This is good. Guys, welcome to the Stinky Pussy Podcast. Episode 170. It's all about the puss. Um... I had sex with a girl once, and the smell literally filled the entire room. I didn't think such a thing was possible. All right. I'm going to move on to this. Move on from this in a bit. I want to... I, I, I bet I'm going to... I'm going to find a fucked up story, and then I'm going to move on. Um... I used to get blowjobs from a fat chick when I was 16. To this day, the best BJ I've ever gotten... One day, because she probably thought it was a hot dog, one day she... I'm sorry, that's fucking... I'm not sorry, that was hilarious. One day she wanted me to fuck her, and she was getting mad because I refused to touch her cooter with my Johnson. This is fucking shit content, guys. I'm going to move on. Um, What else has been happening throughout the week? That's... uh, Well, 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 I'm going to have to fucking apologize for that, I know. You know what? I'm not going to apologize. You should apologize for your smelly puss. (laughs) Oh man, I see, hey, you know what we need to stop? You know who? You know who has the smelliest dick? All right, see, look at this gender equality. Speared Sundays just when all of the women tuned out. I'm now, I'm just now getting onto the smelly taints of men, which you know can be. Can I say? Look, here's the thing. You know what it's like? I can't think of a good analogy, but here's here's the rule. Okay, I would say that that women have the potential to have the stinkiest privates, for sure. Like, ah, you know what it's like? It's like men and women's strength, okay? Generally, on the whole, men stronger than women. But every now and then, right, there's a fucking beast, you know? There's a there's a fucking really strong bitch that could beat the shit out of a couple dudes, okay? It's kind of like that, right? I would say... That, that generally, women have the stinkiest, you know? Like, if you were looking for the stinkiest top 10 smelly pusses, it would be Chloe Kardashian, that gigantic, that, that giantess, right? And then down, there'd be, there'd be a few blank spots because no one even comes close. And then, like, number 10 would be, I don't know, Theresa May. <laughs> I don't know, she just strikes me as someone who has a, has a wafty moot. <laughs> Theresa May has a wafty moot. I'm never going to get allowed into 
England or whatever country she's in charge of, right? Wafty moot. That's disgusting. So, so top 10 stinkiest privates. Women fill all the spots. But I would say most common stinky privates definitely, absolutely occupied by dudes. It is so much more likely for a dude to have like a dastardly taint. <laughs> An insidious ball sack smell than it is for a woman to have a smelly pussy because women, they're nice and their hygiene's very important to them. Me, in my jeans, top three, right? You wouldn't want to come anywhere near my nuts right now. You wouldn't. It, it's, the, it's the danger zone. I mean, it's not top 10 stinky privates, but, you know, it's a nice six. It's a six out of 10 right now. Six out of 10 waft. That's what we're dealing with. You know what's fucking funny? I am almost 100% certain that the warehouse to my right and the warehouse behind me is currently listening to me talk about how I have a stinky taint right now. And then, and when I finish this podcast, I'm going to leave and I'm probably going to make eye contact with a lot of these guys. And that's how I know that I'm a fucking alpha male. Because I can make eye contact with a man double my age and go, yeah, what's up? I got stinky nuts. Got a problem with that? Because <laughs> I don't. I ain't going to wash him. <laughs> what am I talking about? Oh, that's right. You know who would have a fucking... You know who would have like... You know who would have... What's, a, what's another fucking word? What's an obscure way to describe the smelly dick? You know who would have... I've already done Insidious. I like Dastardly Taint. That was my favorite. What else you got? Dastardly Taint. Ah, yeah. You know who would have an infamous stench? <laughs> you know who would have an infamous stench? Those dudes that go running with their little backpacks. Who's doing that? Leave your backpack at home and wash your nuts instead. I saw a dude fucking jogging in like 30 degree heat and he had on like tights and his fucking tight little stretchy t-shirt. That's fine. But on his back, he had a little fucking backpack. What are you carrying, man? What's in there? Huh? Anything important? And, it, and the, the thing, if it was like a big backpack, I'd be like, oh, this guy's late, late for work. He can run with it. But it's like a small, it's basically just a pocket. Like, shorts have pockets, man. Use that. What do you have? Your wallet? Sure. Chuck it in the pocket. Like, it, no shit. It was about, the fucking thing was about as big as this microphone, right? It's like fucking this big. What has he got in there? There's no, no water bottle, for sure. That's what I don't... Like, what, what are you keeping in there? House keys? Yeah, maybe... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up. Of, of how much did this dude fucking spend on a running backpack when he could have just put shit in his fucking pocket? You can't even find them on Google. Small running backpack. $80. For fucking back pockets. What? To keep... In a jogging backpack. How to run with a backpack to get in shape. Hey, here's a good idea. Just fucking stay at home and go to the gym instead, you dude. You <laughs> yeah, there's nothing funnier than a than a fucking like than a fucking adult male with a big backpack. And I've got I have one. Right, but I got a nice one. You know, I've got I've got a backpack that that it's just it's nice and plain, it's real functional. It, so it looks fine, but you know those fucking adult men, like they're dads, and they've got like a giant fucking backpack with like 30,000 zips and straps, and, and you know that they just, like it's their, it's their teenage sons, and it's like this fucking $20, and it's always red, <laughs> it's always fucking red, isn't it, with black zips? It's always like bright red, and it's gigantic, and there's like this dad with a polo shirt, 
and cargo shorts with this fucking massive backpack. And it looks full, even though it's not. Like, you know there's hardly anything in it. It's just like maybe a water bottle, maybe a book. And it's just fucking like, it looks so full because the, the backpack is like so rigid. That's the good thing about my backpack is like when there's nothing in it, it's small. When it's full, it doesn't look huge. But you, there's those fucking like schoolboy backpacks that <laughs> like even if it's empty, it looks like you're carrying like someone's head. And there's always those fucking like 40 year old dads in cargo shorts and polo shirts just rolling around in this massive fucking big red backpack with black zips that looks like he's carrying so much in it. Like he's like everything. Like he's fucking Frodo going down to Mordor. And he's got so much shit in it. <laughs> okay, man. Leave it in your car. Whatever you're carrying, you don't need it now. <laughs> How long will we be going for here? Oh, half an hour. Oh. What else has been happening in this, in this week? I haven't done too much, guys. Oh, man. I've been... Uh, hey, turn it off now because I'm about to talk about Warhammer. I've been, uh, I've been going ham with the fucking painting the miniatures, dude. That was my dumb purchase after, after the tour. I just got everything. Everything that I needed. I got paints... I got glue, I got like eight brushes, I got like six different tools, I got a file, I got clippers, I got a mold line remover, I got a knife, I got I got putty to cust to mold custom things on the miniatures. I got all of I got a whole fucking army of gene steel occultists, right? I got a battle force, it's got a fucking patriarch and uh and, and, and so my whole army is enforcing the, the patriarchy with the help of aliens, right? And I got fucking Gene Steel Occultists. I got Corrupted Imperial Guard. I got fucking everything. And I have been painting for like every day. And it, I got to tell you, it is the best shit ever. I think that I am at least one third less intelligent because I've been sniffing so much plastic glue that I'm starting to, to not see the color blue. I don't know what it looks like. This poster behind me used to be blue. Now it's gray. I don't know what's going on, but hey dude, I'm building my fucking miniatures. And I tell you, it's a good thing that I don't need blue because otherwise that part of the miniature would be painted gray. <laughs> no, seriously, man. I've been getting into this fucking hobby heaps. <clears throat> It's so good. It's, dude, you need a hobby that is not screens. If you don't have one, fucking get one. It, like, fixes... I Sometimes I get, like, I get, I don't know, I get... Social media is weirdly... It stresses you out. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's it's like a drug. It's like, oh, refresh, gotta get... Ooh, who, where's that notification? Is that like, how's my video doing? Oh, it's, oh, it's front page of Reddit. I better read fucking 6,000 comments and just fucking spend all night scrolling... Reading everything actually was good. My video hit front page Reddit and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to bed. And I went to sleep and I woke up and it was fucking great. I love waking up to a big video. Instead of just sitting there watching it go, oh, huh, how big is it getting? Huh, huh. Well, this comment, oh, this person says the analogy is a bit of a stretch. They didn't fucking watch the whole thing. Now I'm mad and I can't sleep. I didn't do that. And what I've been doing is painting, building, converting... I'm getting so serious about this painting thing that I think that I might start up a secondary Instagram account for it. I've just been waiting to get my social media content back on track because I knew if I posted this shit like, like three weeks ago when I started doing it and I was like, new Instagram account. I know it, all of the comments would be like, make some videos, fuck it. <laughs> um, but now that I have made some fucking videos, two videos in two weeks. Who am I? Two videos in two weeks. I'm two phones. That's who I am. Two videos, two weeks in a row. That's four videos, two weeks. And I'm already, I've already fucking written and planned next week's video. Oh, 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 who's this guy with the regular content and the stinky balls? <laughs> it's fucking me. I'm just as surprised as you guys are. Actually, no, I'm not. I fucking plan for this, right? Anyway, what I'm saying is, it's so good to just do something fucking fiddly with my hands. I'm getting so serious about this shit is I'm not just building these little toy soldiers and then painting them. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm sub-assembling them. 
so that I can spend more time and get paint into the hard to reach crevices. What I am doing is the most tedious shit ever and I fucking love it. I'm building like... So they've got bases, they got legs, they got chests, arms, faces, guns, weapons. It's all like different pieces. And these things are like fucking two, three inches tall. Not even. Maybe even one and a half inch tall, right? I don't know. How do I measure? I'm, I, I generally just measure things in my penis. So if I've got like one inch in comparison to the length of my penis, it's about... Yeah, they're like fucking... Yeah, they must be like that big, you know? And I'm not going to divide it because all you fucking math nerds are going to work out the exact size of my dick. And I, and I don't need that out there. All right. I don't need that on my Wikipedia article. Like height, six foot eight, penis size, 37 inches. All right. That's a small, that's a, that's a tiny exaggeration. It's a little bit smaller than that. <laughs> <clears throat> what I've been doing, man, is I've been sub building them in sub assembly so I can paint them better. So what, most people do is they build the whole thing and then they paint the whole thing and then they're done. Nah, fuck that, okay? What I'm doing is I build the legs and then I put the, the chest on it and that's all I build and then I paint that all up and then I paint the arms separately so that I can paint the arm and the gun and if they hold it across their chest, I paint the back of the fucking gun meticulously even though when you glue it, to the fucking chest and the legs that it's previously been built, you can't see the back of the gun. But I know it's fucking there. And if I knew that that shit wasn't painted properly, I would have a seizure. And I don't want one of them. So now I know that even though you can't see it, and that was a waste of time, the back of that gun, 100% painted. For no one. Not even me to see. I can't even see it. But I know that it's... Fucking thing. Sorry. <clears throat> The camera died. I thought I had it fucking plugged in, but it wasn't. Oh, I, I got so, I got so angry. I screamed, "Cunt!" Here, and this is middle of the day. There's people working. I'm just I just was like, my the camera died, and I thought, what happened? Because the camera died while we were filming the sketch, uh, and we lost all of the footage, and I had to refilm the whole thing. And I had just done like 35 minutes of the podcast. The camera died, and I just I just thought that the that whole thing was gone. And like a sketch, it's written. You just read the lines again. You can't do that with this shit. It's all fucking... I, I, don't, I plan nothing. I write down six dot points and then I ramble on for an hour. And for some reason, you fucking idiots enjoy it. <laughs> so the thing died and I just thought immediately... I was like, oh, last time this happened, I had to refilm the whole thing. So I thought 35 minutes of, of, of just the podcast was gone. I have to refilm it. And I just screamed, can't. Um, I'm going to get kicked out, dude, of this place for sure. Um, what was I saying? I need, dude, I, I, it has been so hot in these fucking jeans that I've gone out and I've bought like the giant fucking two liter bottles of, of water. Oh, it's warm. I don't get, and I'm, I'm just like, I need to drink like two of these. Otherwise I'll die of fucking dehydration in my jeans. Um, what am I saying? Fucking. Oh, yeah. So I, I build these in fucking sub-assemblies. Ha <laughs> ha, I remembered. You got to listen to me ramble on about toy soldiers. And uh, it's actually, it's been, seriously, it's been really relaxing just painting and having that. I don't know. I suppose having a creative outlet that I, I don't want to make my career I don't particularly want to put it out there and get feedback. It's just for me to get better at a for me is kind of good. Because obviously comedy, I want to get better for me. But there's, you know, the audience's reaction is 70% of improving at comedy. It's like, what do you think? Is this funny? They laughed. Okay, it's good. They didn't laugh. I better fix that. Whereas with the fucking painting thing, I can just look at it and go, oh, that sucks. But I, I know I can make that better like this. And no one's going, Oh, fucking release some real content. <laughs> it's great. Um, and it's so good to just not be looking at screens. I just chuck on a podcast and I paint for two, three hours. It's the best. <clears throat> so I, I don't know. I might start up an Instagram account. But I don't know. Do I really want to fucking have a, a, a let you cunts in on another thing? Last time I did a passion project, I was like, oh, where's the fucking music? I have that mixtape actually, wait. 
actually all done. That's going to come out. Oh, I might put it out next week, maybe. Who knows? Uh, either way, it'll be up early on Patreon. I'm trying to work out what to do with it. I think the files are all on my old laptop. I don't know. Might come out. Might never Might never come out. <laughs> Who fucking knows? Um, all right, guys. I'm going to get into miscellaneous bit at the end. Oh, dude, shout out to... Uh, if you're not in the podcast group, man... Dude did the funniest shit. Someone turned from last episode, me just kind of improving about a rap about jeans. Someone made a beat for it and they put it in the fucking podcast group. I've forgotten the name. Um, where is it? Uh, shout out to Mitty, uh, who put put the post in the group. You can check out his SoundCloud. I checked out some of his other serious production and it's actually very fucking good. Um... So, check out his other music as well, and uh, hey man, I uh, he sent me an email, I got him to email me, I think we're going to make a full version of this, I'm going to ch- I'm I'm play what he fucking put, if you're, if you're not in the Facebook group, you wouldn't have seen it, so I'll, I'll play it for you cunts, um, but it's fucking funny man, and I, uh, where are we, so I'm just getting up, I can't fucking talk and phone at the same time, uh, can't. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it's funny, and uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. Before I talked about it on the podcast, I had written the entire song. Um, so I've got the whole song, and this beat is sick, so we're going to do it together, and uh, that'll come out sometime in the summer, probably next year, because i got to record it and do a film clip and all that stuff, but this is what he made. No matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. It's almost a song. It don't matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. It don't matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. It don't matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. It don't matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. You know what? I might do that song. You know, next year, hey, I might come up with a fucking banger all about wearing jeans in the summer. You heard it here first, me and Sunday's podcast. Fucking so good, man. Shout out to Mitty. Uh, I loved how you chucked in two phones. Uh, it's a private track though, so you won't f- you won't find it on his SoundCloud. Obviously, the cunt's too embarrassed to admit that he listens to the podcast of people who are uninitiated. He didn't put it on his fucking thing publicly, which is fine. <coughs> um, but yeah, check out the Speared Sunday's podcast group on Facebook, and the link is in there if you want it. Or just fucking, you know, I literally just played it for you, so you don't need, you don't need the link anymore. So hey, there's, there's no incentive to join other than the spicy, disrespectful memes. Oh, and someone else found the uh, the tattoo that I talked about about uh, Eddie Maguire with cum on his face, and it's so much worse than what I remembered. Oh, it's been taken down from Facebook. Someone put it in the group. Um, I will screenshot it and I'll put it in the group now. I'll put that in. Because it's been taken down from Facebook. Poor Eddie. Oh, that's horrible. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? Uh, miscellaneous bit at the end, if you don't know, is a part of the podcast. Worst part, uh, cause of many suicides, where I answer questions sent in by listeners. If you need some life advice, if you have a funny story, I would love to hear it. Um, especially revenge stories. I'm craving one. Have you ever got revenge on someone? Have you ever just, re- like, revenged the fuck out of someone? Especially if you've ever got revenge on someone and then regretted it because you went too far. I want to hear that story. Have you got revenge on someone? Email me, podcast at lewspears.com. And uh, I'll keep you anonymous if you want. All right. Where are we? <clears throat> Sorry for making... I haven't, I haven't read this one. This is good. Sorry for making the most depressing part of the podcast more depressing. Uh, sick. Well, this will be fucking... This will be a riot, won't it? G'day, cunt. How's it going? I prefer if you kept me anonymous. For the the purpose of this, you can call me Barlog. Nah, man. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to call you... Mike. I've been a fan of yours since Face Beef days, and I have to thank you for molding my sense of humor into something that isn't choreographed pranks it's also been a fucking absolute pleasure seeing you grow as a comedian kicking goals thank you anyway dick riding aside oh what it's over 
dick riding aside, I'm in a bit of a pickle and I feel like you would be the best person to shed some light on the situation. I'm in love with one of my best friends. Oh, what are these again? I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm in love with one of my best friends and I've known I've been in love with her for years now. Before you click away, it gets more complicated and I don't know what to do. Just tell her, bro. How about that? This is complicated as fuck for a number of reasons. Not only is she the best girlfriend I have, she's also dated my best friend while we were in high school. And although it was a long time ago, as we are well out of high school now, my best friend passed away. Oh, okay. This is, a, oh yeah. This is a hard one. All right. Now we're back on board. I was hating this email, but now this is juicy. I'm sorry for your loss. I shouldn't get excited. Oh, his, his friend died. Woohoo! Is it going to be a good story? I'm sorry. That was insensitive. Uh, my best friend passed away a number of years ago, and I don't know if I could fully live with myself if we ever went through with it. I also don't know. I also don't think she has that intent with me. Uh, or I've, well, I've never actively looked in for, into the signs, at least. Uh, there's a huge part of me that wants to act on impulse and tell her everything, everything, because I've had these feelings for about 10 years now, while also being in relationships and not telling a soul about my true feelings. And I know that in a relationship situation, it would work perfectly. But on the other hand, I would feel hell guilty, even though part of me knows if he was still, if he was still alive, he would give me his blessing. There is also the factor of the relationship not working and then me possibly losing one of the most important people I've ever known. Thanks for listening to my beta cuck stories and my apologies for making the worst part of the podcast even more depressing. P.S. I'm vegan and I thought your Stop World Vegan Day campaign was comedy gold. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, dude, you have to tell her, I think. Um, it is definitely an awkward situation. He passed away a number of years ago because it's like you want to... But you know what, though? <sighs> I don't know. It, yeah, it's hard, man. But at the end of the day, I feel like your friend would probably want her to be happy and would want you to be happy. Uh, and you just fucking sitting there in love with this girl and her not knowing is not good for you. And potentially not good for her, because who knows, man, she might feel the same way, but she might be feeling the same fucking wall as the dead friend uh, standing in the way of that. I would tell her, man, I would tell her in a respectful way and just see how it goes. I mean, you, like, just be honest, dude. That's, I, I'm, I'm, I would say that you've got nothing to lose, but I mean, dude, you kind of don't have anything to lose because at the end of the day, what you have now is a weird friendship where you're in love with a girl. You, you're not really, that's not a real friendship. That's just you being fucking weird and not expressing yourself properly. So that's not a very good friendship because a friendship doesn't have those feelings involved with it. So I would just tell her, man, try just be honest. Hey, I fucking I I really like you and I have for like 10 years and I feel like you and me could give could give this thing a shot. Um I would tell her, bro. That's what do you what do you have to lose? Nothing. I mean, you're already fucking in love with her. The only thing that will change is that she will now know. Great. Maybe she feels the same way. And if she doesn't, at least now at least you'll be able to be like, "Oh, well she doesn't fucking love me, so I can put those feelings to rest and move on from it and, and look for love elsewhere. Otherwise, you're just going to be living your life thinking what could have been. You get a new girlfriend and you're like, oh, this is pretty good, but what if I was fucking her? This chick sucks. She's got a pungent pussy. She's part of that posse. I, I met her at the parade. I gave her a sniff, picked her out of the lineup and took her home. But I really wish I, st I stuck with this chick who's who, who I didn't even know if she has a smelly pussy or not. I would just tell her, man, be honest, be respectful. Um... And, uh, sounds like your friend would just want her to be happy and want you to be happy as well. So, uh, I mean, you said it yourself. He wouldn't mind. So go out there, make yourself happy, bro. Tell her. And, 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 and if she's not okay with it, just take it like, take it like a fucking gentleman and be like, okay, I just wanted to get my feelings out there. That's fine. I'm going to do my best to just be your friend and I'm going to put these feelings to rest. 
And then if you can't put them to rest, hey, maybe it's best that you're not friends. But you don't have to do that. I would be honest, man. Honesty is the best policy. Send me an update. Let me know how that goes. All right, Brian or whatever the fuck I decided to call you. Um, I'm going to leave it there, guys. I uh, if you if you want to send an email in, send it to podcast at loosebeers.com. I'd love to hear it. Um, if you would like to support what I'm doing, support me on Patreon. It fucking helps heaps. Uh, we've been putting all of that money back into the whole creating new shit, and uh, it's going really well. Now we've. Uh, you know, I'm using a, I'm using a bit of that fucking Patreon money to uh, pay Keelan so we can film the Luke and Lewis podcast because Lord knows the radio isn't paying for that. Fucking Luke and I are splitting the cost. So, woo! That's great. Let's make even less money than we were. Why not? Um, so, if you want to keep that going, the reason I can afford to do that is because of Patreon and uh, it makes a huge difference. That's why two videos are coming out this week and, and last week and hopefully going to keep that going for the rest of 2019. All right? So Patreon, and you get early access to everything that I do. So this podcast went up on Wednesday. I mean, oh yeah, Wednesday. This podcast went on Wednesday. Uh, Videos go up early. And there's a Discord, which is like a group chat that I try to jump into every day and uh, see what's going on. And everyone in there is uh, full of fucking horrendous memes. Last time time they started doing something, they all changed their name to fucking Pear. And uh, they wouldn't wouldn't stop talking about Pears. And I fucking hated that, but I'm sure you would love it. So jump in the Discord. The memes are horrendous. Uh, All right, that's the end of the podcast. I will see you guys next Sunday. Um, And I hope you guys have uh, have a... um, I hope you have a... I hope you have a... uh, 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 A... uh, uh, Shh. Yeah, smelly pussy. <laughs>